Did you know that back in the day, Blocks Foods actually used to be circles instead of squares? And did you know that the max level was only 300? These are 22 things that only old Blocks Foods players remember. Okay, so some of you old players might remember that back in the day, the Blocks Foods in the game actually used to look a little bit different. I mean, they were still block shaped, but they just looked like low textured versions of the fruits that we have now, making them look way worse. But did you guys know that actually way before that, that the fruits actually didn't used to be cubes? They used to be normal circles and they would actually look like proper fruits. But the reason they changed this is due to copyright because it's way too similar to the anime. But in my opinion, they look really cool as blocks and it definitely fits the theme as a Roblox game. Okay, so this was a glitch that only OG players will remember. It literally let you get two fruits at the same time, and this glitch was just really overpowered, and that's probably the reason why they patched it. So how it worked was that you should equip the beast type blocks fruit and then eat it, and then you activate the transformation of that fruit, then you can go to the blocks fruit dealer, and once you purchase another fruit, you instantly get all its abilities, so you can use the abilities of a different fruit while in a transformation. And if you do the combinations with the leopard fruit and awakened dough, they just get really overpowered. I mean, imagine having the two best PvP fruits in the game merged into one. That's way too overpowered for anybody's liking. Inventory block fruits. But did you know back in the day, you used to actually have a thing called the treasure inventory. The treasure inventory allowed you to store block fruits and game passes. You could only store one of each fruit or two if you bought the game pass. And unlike the inventory, the treasure inventory was a physical chest on the floor that you would literally have to walk to to access. And once you put a fruit in the treasure inventory, you could no longer drop it. Really similar to the inventory we have now and when you wanted to trade fruits with other players you had to have stored them in the treasure inventory to be able to trade them overall i definitely think that the inventory is better and the treasure inventory was probably not the best choice the devs made Okay, so this is a change that a lot of you OG players might not have noticed. I'm obviously talking about the old startup menu. And if we look at a side-by-side -side comparison of these, they almost look identical, but there's one major difference. And if you look over to the pirate side, you can see that on the current version, there's just a normal pirate. But in the old version, it's actually one of the bosses from the pirate village. It's actually the clown boss, Buggy, from the pirate village. And this is a pretty small change, and I'm not really sure why they changed this, but there's actually another change as well. If you look a little bit down, down, you're gonna notice that in the old version there is no fast mode that means you have to play your game on completely maxed out graphics and that's definitely an improvement for you guys out there that play on phones or pretty bad computers so overall this is a pretty good change there's three different categories of fruits and blocks fruits and they are natural elemental and beast beast fruits are the ones with transformations the elemental fruit is where your body literally turns into the element and the natural fruits are just ones with really weird powers but did you know that before in the old stages of blocks fruits they actually used to have have different names. The natural blocks fruits were actually called Paramecia, the elemental ones were called Logia, and the beast ones were called Zoan. And you might be wondering, why were they actually called these instead of what they are today? And the reason for that is because they had the name similar to the One Piece anime, and later on they were changed because of copyright reasons. Overall, this is a pretty decent easter egg, and it's kind of hard to notice. Okay, so this change is probably the most important out of every change on this list, and did you guys know that before, in the early stages of the game, blocks fruits actually wasn't called blocks fruits, it was called blocks piece and this was also another change that was changed because of copyright but they changed it to blocks fruits because the game majorly focuses around the fruits and the startup page looked really weird imagine loading up your game one day and seeing the game called blocks piece instead of blocks fruits pretty weird did you know that the max level in blocks fruits actually used to be only 300 compared to the level today which is 2450 that's literally more than 2000 levels that they've added to the game the max island for the game was literally the coliseum it was the last island and once you reached you couldn't go anywhere else you literally finished the game there was no second c and no third c overall i'm really glad that they added more islands to the game because it would be kind of boring if you just finished the game once you reach the coliseum did you guys know that the server size for blocks was actually only used to be 10 players back in the day can you imagine how peaceful it would be back then? You could literally do all of your quests in peace and there would be a very low chance that someone else had the same quest as you. Really helpful. Not sure why they changed this though. Back in the olden days of Blocks Fruits, there were actually only four different game passes and the Blocks Fruit Notifier was not one of them. So every fruit that spawned on the map, you would literally have to manually find it and pick it up, making it so that not many people would get random fruits. And I'm pretty sure that's the reason they added this game pass. It's really useful for tracking down your fruits and I'm not sure what I would do with that. 
about it. Okay, so this is a pretty small change as well. Did you guys know that when Observation Hockey first came into the game, it looked completely different to what it looked like now? I'm gonna be showing you guys a side-by-side -side comparison of what it looked like. And as you can see, it feels way more realistic in the old version, if you ask me. And I'm really not sure which one I prefer. I actually think I like the older one more. Okay, so blocks with devs, if you're watching this, please revert this change. I like the old one more. Okay, so this is a really major change, and I'm pretty sure it's one that a lot of you did not know. So did you guys know that back in the day in blocks fruits, guns actually used to do 40% less damage? For context, that's almost only half the damage that they do. And guns are still useless in the game. Imagine how useless they would have been back then. And would there even have been a reason to buy guns? I mean, you might as well just stick to swords and fruits, because they're the best in the game, if you ask me. Okay, so this is a really massive change, and it's one that a lot of you are instantly gonna realize if you played this old blocks fruits version. I'm obviously talking about the water. If you take a look on screen right now, the water used to look way different to what it looks like now. And the water, it just looks way more still and it's a lot more blue. Which makes it a bit more realistic, but I don't really think this fits the blocks fruit style. The water back then didn't even really look like it was flowing, compared to the water now, which looks like it's flowing with no problem and looks way more fluid. Overall, I definitely like the new water way better than the old one and I'm really happy they changed it. Okay, so now I'm gonna be talking a bit about Poneglyphs, and if a lot of you don't know what they are, I wouldn't be surprised. The Poneglyphs were large stones that were put into the game in update 10 or 12. Not really sure exactly which one, because the devs added this as a secret easter egg. One of the Poneglyphs was located in the Snow Mountain, and the other one in the Cave Island. Both of these islands are on the second scene. Not much is known about these structures, but rumors spread that it was a hint about an awakening for the rubber fruit. But at the end of the day, they just happen to be easter eggs. But sadly, it's no longer in the game. Okay, so this next one is definitely one of the most game-changing ones on this list. I'm talking about the sky jump ability that you all know and love. So did you know back in the day, you could actually sky jump an infinite amount of time as long as you had the energy for it. And this just made the sky jump ability really overpowered and the devs wasted no time in nerfing this. Currently in the game, you can jump a total of 10 times if you're the human race and it varies depending on what race you have. But back then it was infinite so you could literally jump from the bottom of Skylands all the way to the upper part. And that's just really overpowered and probably one of the coolest things ever. Okay, so this was something that used to be in the game that made it really overpowered for Buddha users. So everybody knows that once you transform with the Buddha, you just walk about the speed as a normal person, not giving you any extra speed benefits. But back in the day, Buddha users used to get a 60% speed boost once transformed. To give you context to how OP that is, that literally makes your player way faster. And everybody already knows that the Buddha fruit is the best grinding fruit in Blocks Fruits, and adding this to it would just make it way more overpowered. Imagine fighting someone and you just running circles around them and they cannot keep up. Really OP if you ask me, and it's probably something that should not have stayed in the game. Okay, so this is a pretty small change, but it would be pretty big for you pay to win users out there. Back in the day, if you wanted to buy a fruit with Robux, you would actually have to wait for it to be in stock. This made it pretty hard for YouTubers to get the fruits they needed for videos, stuff like the Leopard Doe and other really overpowered ones. But now you can just buy with Robux whenever even if it's not in stock, and it comes in really handy a lot. So I'm really glad they changed this. Okay, this is something that affected a lot of players that were new to the game. Back in the day in Blocks Fruits, you actually did not have any spawn protection. So if you were outside the beginner island, that means anybody would be able to kill you at any time, and there wasn't even a level cap. Not fun, is it? So this is a really good change, and I think it prevented a lot of players from quitting. Okay, so everybody knows that there's four different types of sea events in Blocks Fruits. There's ship raids, sea beasts, rumbling waters, and mirage island. And you guys should be really familiar with these. But in the old Blocks Fruits, you actually had absolutely no sea events, making it way harder to grind fragments. And this is a really cool change, and it really shows how much Blocks Fruits has developed through the years. Okay, so this is something that a lot of you might already know. Back in the day in Blocks Fruits, there were actually no fragments. But what you might have not known is that there was an item called a rare artifact. And a lot of you might be wondering, what is a rare artifact? The rare artifacts were an item that were dropped by the Darkbeer raid boss, and you would get it 100% of the time. And they actually served as a substitute for fragments. You could buy a bunch of different things with them. You could buy Dragon's Breath, you could buy the Kabucha Gun, a stat reset point from Plokster, and a race change from Norp. 
but they were removed in update 11. Overall, I think this was really good for the game and fragments are definitely way better. Okay, so everybody knows about the Bloxroot Scotch. It's literally one of the best NPCs in the whole of Bloxroot. But did you know back in the day, the Bloxroot Scotch did not exist. You couldn't roll for random fruits. And the first time he was added was during a winter event. And the community liked him so much that they made him a permanent addition to the game. In my opinion, the Bloxroot Gotcha fits Bloxroots really well. And it gives new players a way to get good fruits without having to grind super hard for them. But there's also a huge amount of luck to it. But in my opinion, that's what's good about it. Okay, so this one is not as old as the other ones on this list. I'm talking about the Christmas event. So during the Christmas event, when you killed NPCs, you would actually get candy. And there were a bunch of different NPCs that used this. And you could trade in these candies to get a bunch of other stuff. For Santa Claus, you could trade them in for the elf hat, the Santa hat, and the sleigh. The magic elf gave you 15 minutes of double XP, stat refunds, and race rerolls. And also the greedy elf, which gave you fragments in return. So candies were really good currency, but it's a shame they weren't a permanent addition to the game. Overall, I think they were pretty good, and they definitely fit the Christmas event. Okay, so everybody knows about the portal fruit in Blocks Fruits, but did you know that back in the day, it actually used to be called the door fruit? But the major differences about this were way the abilities were styled. And the reason the fruit was changed from a door fruit to a portal was because of copyright. The first ability was called Spinning Door, and this is exactly what it sounds like. You kind of just dash forward spinning and you do a bit of damage to the player in front of you. The next ability was called Dimensional Door, and this is where you enter the door dimension and no one can see you or hit you, but the moment you do damage to someone else, you completely exit out of it. The next one was called Door Gateway, and this basically just lets you teleport anywhere you want on the map, exactly the same as the current portal ability. The next one is called Hallway, and this is where the user opens a portal in front of them and then exit where their cursor is pointing. It's kind of similar to a flash step, but a way cooler version of it. There were also a butt ton of glitches with it. But overall, it's a really good fruit, and if it wasn't for copyright, I definitely think it's better than the portal.